All right, today I'm out running a bunch of errands. Just picked up a bunch of soil for our microgreens. Picked up some more irrigation supplies. But today we're going to be taking down the front yard greenhouse. And unfortunately for the haters out there, it's not because we were forced to take it down. It's because we no longer need it. The season's warming up. Two week forecast is looking really good. And we could actually use some of the parts from this greenhouse to move to another one of our plots, our newer plot to expedite the growth of that lettuce that we're putting in the ground right now. And I'll take you guys through what's happening today. Let's go for it. Well, guys are just about finished planting these beds. So we're gonna pull that tunnel from the front yard and put the rest of it here. We, um, we didn't have enough bows to do this one and our attempt with pulling the one out of our flagship plot to bring here didn't work very well. Um, just because these beds are bigger than the ones we had at that plot. And so we had some hoops left over from the farmer's friend greenhouse and we tried to just pair it up with this, it didn't work out. So since the weather is turning around and uh, we no longer need the one in the front yard at my place because those crops are well established now, um, we can use it here to just basically accelerate these crops, more or less what we did down with this one. I don't imagine this will be up more than two weeks, but it'll basically give these crops a good jump start. So those guys are actually just walking those um, bows over to the new plot. It's, as the crow flies, it's not even a block away. So there's an alley go, that goes between this street and that house. So it's actually faster to just walk them there than it is to put them in the truck and drive them all around the block. Oh, from from uh, from Nestle's? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, from there and from I think a few other places. Do you sell them at Canadian? A new microgreen mix at the store. It's called Rainbow Mix. That has uh, a Japanese chrysanthemum in it called uh, Shungiko, but it's actually not the flower. It's just the leaf. Oh, right on. Yeah. We're... So that's it for our front yard greenhouse. It was up for maybe six weeks or something like that. Maybe a little bit less. Did it devalue the property in the neighborhood? No, it didn't. Just as the construction site across my house for the last two months hasn't devalued the real estate in the neighborhood. Some people seem to think that something temporary like that will all of a sudden affect all the property values in the, in the neighborhood. It's absolutely absurd. Here, here's a funny one actually. There, there's, a, there's a mountain over, over to the north here called Knox Mountain. And it would be impossible for me to show you with the camera, but there's basically this big white covering a house that's been under construction there for the last four or five months and so by the logic to say that my greenhouse that's up here temporarily is going to devalue the neighborhood i guess by that same logic this construction site that everybody in the city of Kelowna can see i guess that construction site is going to devalue the whole city uh, it doesn't really make sense it doesn't really add up but anyways we've had some great conversations with people while it's been in the front yard a lot of a lot of conversations from people that just walk by and end up becoming customers actually. Not a single person that's walked by has said anything negative. In fact, most people that walk by actually comment, and I'm talking most people that just walk by randomly will comment and say, oh, this is cool. You sell your stuff at Nestor's, don't you? Yeah, awesome. We love your stuff. It's awesome. So you're gonna head over to our flagship plot now and plant five beds. Gonna load up the flame weeder and uh, bring my cedar and a few other things and just kind of get it done. The fact that it's raining a bit right now is good because then I won't need to worry about running the irrigation.
Okay, so there is a little bit of weed germination on there and I'm just gonna flame it. So you can see lots of little germinating weeds in there. That's actually what I'm looking for. That's what I wanna see, so this is good. So we'll do a little bit of a flame weed and then we'll plant. That's that. Now I plant these puppies and I'm done. The guys are coming out, they're on their way here to plant more tomatoes though, so uh, we'll probably catch that before I finish the day in the greenhouse. If you guys want to see my video on flame weeding, click up here. One thing I did recently that was is kind of handy for people who are working with me who don't know all the planting densities off of heart is I printed a little chart with my label maker that we use for our greens with all of the Jang rollers uh, and rows for the crop. So you flip up the lid and there it is. That's planted, so I'll just leave that like this for now. Should get rained on again. And uh, the rest of this plot will probably be planted out in the next week or so. And then uh, we'll be maxed out. Usually on our farm by mid-May, every single bed is planted at least once. So actually we have our furthest plot, our bi-rotation plot has yet to be planted. So. We'll probably prep that up early next week, maybe even this week if we have the time, and then that will be the last place that we're planting. We're just great. Yeah, put these suckers in there. Okay, you can see that they're, they're shorter than the other guys. Not by much, but they are. Okay. Right on. We're gonna go over here, but there's too much dirt flying over here next to Toby. Okay. What are you, a machine? <laughs> I'm gonna leave these guys to finish up those tomatoes. Probably be another day at work to get all that done. They're most, they're about halfway planted now, but then the next step is to put the wires up and then string them up. That might be half a day's work, and then we'll put end walls on the greenhouses. We're, we're gonna just close up the ends on this side. We don't even need to have any opening, just seal them up like I did on my hothouse. And then we'll rig up a way to put the old doors that we had in on this side and then this site is done. All right, I know when the busy season is on, I'm getting text messages from chefs multiple times a day and that is officially happening. Now we're probably getting to the point where we're gonna be delivering, well, we are delivering twice a week right now, but we're getting to the point now where they'll probably have chefs also picking up almost every single day of the week and I just got a text from a chef, he's on his way now. Ran it, went through the 10 pounds of greens we brought him yesterday, so he needs more now. So we fortunately have some left over in the cooler that he's gonna come and pick up. One of the great advantages of being an urban farmer and being in the city is having that access and that convenience that uh, a chef can get in a car or ride a bike over here in five minutes and get more fresh product. But I just came home and I just noticed a big box here from Carts and Tools. This has gotta be the Tilly. So I'm pretty stoked to try this tool. Had a chat with these guys a couple weeks ago and they've got some cool products and they're looking at innovating some more small scale electric tools for farmers, which is super exciting for people like me. I love my BCS, but hey, if somebody could make a tool that was smaller and lightweight and that's electric powered, in my case, powered by the sun, the solar panels on my house, I'm all for that. So I'm gonna open this puppy up and then I'm gonna wrap the day up. All right, <laughs> so this is gonna take some assembly, which I'm not gonna do right now, but uh, I'm hoping that this thing can replace the tilter because it's better built and it has its own battery and its own motor, so we'll see. That's it for today, guys. Talk to you later.